all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at problem 4-2A. Uh, so it's another production report problem. We're going to be asked to prepare uh, a production report, but the data is lined up in a different way. Um, this is a, a, a strange memory for me. When I uh, was teaching this class in the early days, I... I did a lot of practice production reports and most of the problems I gave to my students to practice were like laid out like four dash one. Um, and so anyway, I get to the midterm and I wanted to save space. So I kind of laid out the problem more like four, two, you'll see if you go back to four, one, it like fills a whole page Four two fills up just a piece of a page and I could actually fit the production report template right below it on the same page. And I thought, oh, this is a good way to lay out a question. Well, I got to tell you, my students were furious with me. They were like, look, you gave us all of our practice problems look like this. And then we get to the exam and the problem looks like this. This isn't fair. And they were, there was just like a mini revolt in my class that people were just really furious. And I still think like, it's not that ridiculous to kind of lay out a question a little bit different way from how we practiced it, but people were not happy with me at that moment. I was almost as unpopular as Peter Daly, and he's a very unpopular prophet, TRU. Um, so it was a pretty upsetting uh, thing to go through. So now whenever we practice, we practice lots of different looking questions. And I tell the students, look, I could lay this out in any way I want. Uh, and you're going to have to deal with it. So anyway, let's do 4 2 I The whole reason for that story is because I wanted to take a shot at my friend Peter Daly. Um, Stable platforms manufacture tables. Materials are added at the beginning of the process and conversion costs are incurred evenly throughout the process. Okay, so that sentence, it, you might have just thrown it away. I'll tell you what happens on tests as well. Students scan the question and they are looking for numbers and they ignore words a lot of the time. So this sentence, materials are added at the beginning of the process. This could not be a more important sentence. Materials are added at the beginning of the process. What does that mean? It means regardless of percentage of completion, materials are 100% complete. So let's say I'm baking a cake, right? I'm baking a cake. I put the cake in the oven and the cake is half finished. It's half baked. Um, at that moment, the cake is 50% complete as to conversion, like the labor and overhead the, over the heating is 50% done, but the material in the cake is 100% done. You can't start baking a cake without all of the material. You know, it's not like, oh, after the cake is baked, I'm going to crack an egg into it. Like I don't have half the eggs. No, I have 100% of the eggs. I don't have, the, I have half the sugar. I have 100% of the sugar. So materials are added at the beginning of the process. That is code. And what you want to read into that code is materials are 100% complete at all times. As soon as I start working on it, they're 100% complete. Maybe another example of, of uh, something that you, one might make where materials are 100% so many things. But the thing I always think of is like an ice sculpture, right? Let's say I'm half finished my ice sculpture. I start you know, cracking away at ice. I'm making an ice sculpture. Uh, I start with a big block of ice and I start cracking down. When I'm half done, I'm half done on the conversion, but my material is all there because I've already, I, I need all the ice to begin with. So material is 100% complete. That's all that sentence means. It's an important sentence though for you to understand. I got very passionate there about that one. I'm in a weird mood today. Um, okay, let's begin. So we're going to start with the name of the company, Stable Platforms. We are preparing a production report. It doesn't tell us a department, does it? Uh, no, I don't see any department. So I'm just going to say production report. Oops. 
production report. And this is for the month of February. So for the month ended February 28th. Okay. So what do we want to do? We want to start with the units. All we're looking for is units. Uh, I see percentages there. I see dollars down there. Units are right here in this column. So units in process February 1st. Well, that's the beginning. And units in process, beginning whip, in process means it's whip. So there's 120. Units started, 380. 120 plus 380 is 500. Uh, units in process, February 20th. That's ending whip. So that's not completed and transferred out. That's ending whip. Okay, so look, I had 500 units to account for. I had 120 and uh, in beginning whip, I started 380. So there's 500 units on the go. My ending whip is 100. How many units were completed? Gotta be 400, right? I know this total's gotta match as well, but it's gotta be 400. Just got to be. So that's what we'll fill in. Completed and transferred out. For equivalent units, we just fill it over, right? It's 100% complete. We wouldn't call it complete if it were not 100% done. For units in ending whip, what percentage complete are they? Well, I just did that whole spiel about materials being added at the beginning of the process. If materials are added at the beginning, materials are 100% complete, right? It doesn't matter that it says 75% here. Uh, materials are added at the beginning of the process, so materials are, are done. Uh, Labor and overhead, though, units in process, sorry. Oh, I, I almost did my classic error here and looked at a percentage of completion for beginning whip. No, 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 we want percentage complete for ending whip. Uh, and our ending whip is 50% done, but that's not 50% for materials. That's 50% for labor and overhead. Again, that sentence, materials are out at the beginning, tells us that materials are 100% complete. Okay, let's add this down. 400 plus 100 is 500. 400 plus 50 is 450. Uh, costs to account for. So now we're looking for dollar amounts and our beginning whip data is there. Uh, materials, 1,000 bucks. Labor and overhead, 500 plus 750. 1250 uh, costs added during the month 4,000 for materials 300 plus 250 is 2800 for labor and overhead total costs 1 plus 4 is 5 1250 plus 2800 oh I was trying to be cute here there we go 4050 add these up all the way around Oops, sorry, I gotta add them up on this side too. We need a totals column. There we are. Cost per equivalent unit, that's just cost divided by equivalent units. 5,000 divided by 500 is 10. 4050 divided by 450 is nine. So $10 per equivalent unit of direct material, $9 per conversion equipment unit. The total cost in this department is $19. Again, the most important number that we will examine. This is the one. This is the one if you're managing the company, you go, oh, this department at Stable Platforms, whatever it is, it's not specified, is adding $19 to my cost. And I would go through each department. I would say, okay, how much cost is being added by each department? Let's move on. Costs of units completed and transferred out. So we take our cost per equivalent unit, multiply by completed and transferred out. 4,000, 10 times 400. Nine times 400 is, of course, 3,600. We'll do the same thing for ending whip. 10 times 100 is 1,000. And nine times 50 is 450. We're going to add all the way around. add all the way at the bottom here and at this point we note that the things that are supposed to match are indeed matching right we said that these two numbers at the top should match and they do and these two whole rows at the bottom should be matching and they are that's a very good sign right that means we've probably done it right not a hundred percent but there's a good chance there it is couldn't find the little highlight button. Um, 
not a hundred percent chance that we're right, but a very good sign. And I, I do, I do want to stress that this line cost per equivalent unit, this is the line that a manager would want to look at in my view. All right. Uh, so that's it for this video. I just want to remind you and maybe stick up for profs a little bit, just because the prof has told you to practice a problem and then they give you a problem on the exam that's similar, but doesn't exactly match the one that they've told you to practice. I don't think the prof's a bad guy. I, I think that's pretty reasonable as long as it's in the ballpark of what you've been working on. Okay, that's it for uh, this video. Stay tuned for the next one.